Hello, VectorWorks aficionados. My name is Luis, product specialist at VectorWorks, trained as an architect, and I'm a big fan of creating presentations and renderings. Recently, I had a chance to participate on a cool project, and I want to share with you the behind the scenes steps to create a twilight rendering using only RenderWorks, VectorWorks building renderer. The original Villanova Icon project is a great design by Harmonic Amazon and Associates. In the model file I was given to start with, everything was nicely sorted into layers and classes, and it looked like it was prepared for a single daylight rendering. We can tell this because it had a single source of light, a helidon object. However, a daylight rendering is different to a twilight or to a night rendering mainly because there is no sunlight. Other types of light sources need to be added, along with adjusting their brightness, color, placement, and determining which ones would be set to on or off for each final scene. In addition to focusing on lighting for this scene, there are a few other things that we pay attention to. Textures, massive models of the surrounding buildings, background, entourage, establish our camera locations, rendering style and post-production adjustments. Let's talk about textures. The model already had a few textures in place, such as uh, glass for the windows and curtain walls, bricks for some of the lower walls, and pavers and grass for roof gardens. As you may already know, this software comes with lots of content that can be accessed from our resource manager. A rich collection of options can be increased with Cinema 4D textures or by importing content from M Texture and Mosa Pattern. And of course, we can always create our own. Now, back to the model at hand. Since we did not need to see inside the building, my team suggested that we can make all the windows less transparent. This was done by simply locating the existing glass texture and then increasing the opacity settings just a bit. Now here's a personal suggestion. Typically, I try not to create or do major edits to textures in the same massive file as a project itself. I use what I call a texture lab file which lets me adjust and view textures quickly in a lean or par down file. After creating and adjusting the textures, you can add them to objects in the projects file, which is easily done by using the resource manager. Okay, let's move on to the next step. Creating daytime, a twilight or night scene means paying attention to lights. First, let's remember what the ambient light settings provide. Ambient light is light that is built into vectors and affects all surfaces equally. It can be turned off or turned way down for night scenes. For indirect lighting, we'll set the number of bounces to 3. This is the optimal setting for exterior scenes. We can also force a color tint if we wanted to but for our twilight scene, we'll keep this one just white. And we'll just be adjusting the brightness, a higher value for when we need a white model, but low for our final rendering. Next is our ambient occlusion, our ticket to a higher definition. With this option turned on, the intersecting planes that share the same color will show a bit darker. For our still exterior twilight rendering with textures, we could turn it off or keep a medium setting, since we'll adjust the shadows by adding more contrast later on. We'll skip the emitter options. Now down here, environment lighting adds light to the scene. The light it produces will appear as if it comes from a sphere surrounding the scene. Now let's check out what we have for light objects. Directional lights, point lights, spotlights, and custom lights. Each type of light object emits light in a different way. 
More information about all of them can be found at the online help system. For the most part, to get the effect I wanted for the scene, I use point lights and some spotlights. I also use a simple lab file to test my light objects. You can test the light object settings with a few options. Adjust the brightness, set the fall off to realistic, and adjust the color temperature to make sure lights are not too cool or too hot. As you add lights in your file, it's always a good practice to give them proper names. That way, it's easier to identify them among what might be many others, especially if you need to turn them on and off at some point. Also, it's a good practice to always assign a class to your lighting objects. You'll thank me for that later. Another recommendation is to convert your lighting objects to hybrid symbols. That way, placing lights on a floor plan becomes a simpler task. Nothing fancy, just a round yellow circle will be sufficient. As you can see, thanks to the organization of the original beam model, it was easy to move floor by floor, randomly placing lights inside the perimeter rooms to mimic reality as much as possible. So let's have a look at some entourage. Objects like trees and bushes, surrounding buildings, and people. This project has a few roof gardens with plant objects, hybrid objects, or image props. These look fine, but for an even better look for 3D rendering, it's best to replace this with three-dimensional trees and bushes. They are a little more detailed and they will produce much more realistic shadows. So once the main building is in good shape, you'll want to spend some time making the neighborhood look more realistic. In order to create a look of surrounding buildings, but also keep the file size reasonable, we generated a few variations of generic buildings, including their balconies, windows, and overhangs. Each building mass was turned into a symbol so that it can be repeated in the surrounding area and in the distance without bogging down the file. Remember, the commission was not to create true photorealism, just a nice twilight suggested illustration. An important aspect of creating believable building masses was the lighting. They needed to look lively. Rather than just using light objects, the windows where you see light were created using a custom texture. This render work texture consists of an image shader with a glow property for the reflection setting. The rest was just about painting different faces of the model to achieve a somewhat random look. Here is an older screenshot from when I was testing this effect. I felt very happy when I saw this effect for the first time. In addition to showing the whole building with the surrounding, it's important to add the side and streetscape to make it look real. Sidewalks and streets were easy. They are just extruded objects with a little thickness and a suitable texture. Planted boulevards were similar but included a grass texture plus randomly placed and rotated 3D trees. The cars you see are part of our standard resource library, but we had some fun modifying them, changing the body colors for variety and adding spotlight objects to simulate headlights and a glowing effect for the taillights. Street lamp symbols also receive a spotlight object pointing down. After that, more entourage was added, benches, signage, and crosswalks, all of them combined make the scene feel livelier. Now let's focus on constructing some scenes. With the model and surrounding ready, it was time to create appealing and attractive views. To get this done, I use RenderWorks camera objects. The camera object has a few features that can give you precise control when selecting and establishing a point of view. Cameras also provide options for camera effects, which can add more style to your scenes. Now let's look at HDRI backgrounds. 
These are key when creating the overall ambient light effect of a scene as well as including a panoramic image behind it. So we knew we wanted to show some of the distant buildings and also wanted the ambient light of the golden hour. While we already have many HDRI backgrounds available, it's also easy to make your own from another image. Simply create a new RenderWorks background resource from the Resource Manager and apply a panoramic image to it. Once the background resource is created, you can simply drag and drop it onto the scene. Here we have a few previews of background samples we tested before arriving at the final one. See if you can spot how the ambient light changes with each new option. The final version was selected based on the amount of clouds, the nice pink and blue sky tone, and perfect horizon that would blend with the surrounding buildings. This all looks pretty good. Now, with the entire project ready to generate views, we were ready to create viewports and place them onto our sheets. Keep in mind that we can create viewports from save views or directly from the camera objects. They are linked, which makes it easier to edit the view if changes are needed. Once the viewports are placed on a sheet, you can verify the page size of the sheet layer. For great looking renderings, I would recommend increasing the resolution from the default 72 dpi up to 300 dpi's. Once the viewports and sheets are set, you can assign the render mode you want directly from the object info palette. Here we can choose a shaded style, artistic, or a fast preview, a redshift mode, or your own custom rendering style. Let me show you my rendering settings that help me increase the quality and decrease production time. Processing the rendering like this can be done on our own computers, of course, but if you are a VectorWorks Service Select member, you have access to our cloud services. Cloud services can do the processing for you, thereby freeing up your computer, letting you do other things. Once the rendering process is done, you can do a little post-production if you like, applying image effects to adjust features like contrast, shadows, highlights, and the like. And there you have it. I wish you happy rendering times. I hope these tips were helpful and that these recommendations can help you achieve great results for your twilight renderings.